Hello and good morning to everyone. Our first speaker of the day will be Heiko Stratman, and he will be speaking about the Shogun Machine Learning Toolbox. Heiko. Uh, yeah, hi, good morning. Uh, quite surprised is that full here, given the early time of the day, but that's good, I guess. So, yeah, as I said, I'm Heiko Stratmann, and uh, this is what I'll be talking about. So, since um, it's a quite short talk, so I can't go really into details, I'll just give a high-level overview over this project. Uh, first, tell you a bit about, you know, what it's about, and the size, and what to expect. And then I'm going to tell you a bit about what machine learning is about. And then I'm going to talk about the, you know, the machine learning features that we have in Shogun, and I'm going to talk a bit about, um, you know, what you can do. And since this is a quite, I feel, a, you know, geeky place, I can talk a bit about technical details of, you know, things that are going on under the hood. And I'll close with some remarks on the nice community that evolved around our project recently. So first, um, as we're an open source project, kind of all the, everything that, you know, people talk about these things is quite a local perspective. So here's some background about me. So I first got, you know, I, I, before I started doing these kind of things, I got a bit distracted and pretended to be a musician and then finally started studying computer science and then machine learning in London. And currently I do a PhD at UCL, doing neuroscience machine learning. And for the people, you know, who know these words, these are my research topics. I'm in particular interested in open source. And so I joined Shugun to uh, bring together my open source and my machine learning interests in 2010. And now I'm kind of guiding the project along. Um, so, what is machine learning about? Uh, how many of you are kind of familiar with, with this term or what it means? Uh, okay, so quite a few. So this is a very, very high level uh, examples of applications, what you can do and of things that I've come across so far. So, um, machine learning is a science and it's really a science of patterns and information. Um, well, what does that mean? It's it's a kind of abstract thing and it involves a lot of mathematics, but what can you do with it? Uh, it's quite useful for automating things, for example, for recognizing things. Um, so one project I worked on last year was uh, was about detecting frauds in airplane wings. And there was a company, and what they did, they injected ultrasonic sound waves into the airplane wing, and then the sound waves travel through the material, they got reflected, they come back, you record them, and then if there's like a little crack or something in the wing, you can see this in the reflection, and this is you want to do this in an automated way, and it's kind of hard for humans to do this actually. Um, so we developed some some tools to do this automatically. Uh, another one is so um, I like going to the sun, and then every year I go to the skin doctor, and then they tell me off for getting sunburns. And they always do this thing: they always take little photographs of my of my skin, and then there's this thing that scans them through. And what it actually does, it looks for characteristic patterns in these photographs, photographs that uh, might indicate that uh, you know there's something dangerous going on. And another nice example is: uh, so two years ago, I was in uh, three years ago, I was in India, and I was using my my credit card, and then uh, it got it got uh, blocked immediately. And I called the banks like, uh, "Sorry, I need money," and they're like, "Oh, we we have some. We we thought this was some fraud." So their computer system told them, "Oh, here's likely to be some fraud." Uh, there are more examples. For example, you, you, you might want to predict things, not just recognize or detect things. So uh, another project I worked on was actually on um, predicting uh, how HIV of a bunch of patients reacts to a certain treatment, whether it's resistant or not. So we, what we did is we took the DNA of the, of the HIV viruses of the individual patients and we put it into our pattern recognizing machine learning algorithm. And then it told us, don't give this patient this particular treatment. And this is all learned from, from, um, from data. So there are more things. So I do a PhD in neuroscience. We look a lot at, uh, you know, brain scans and things like this. But there's also commercial interests, like, you know, these companies like Google, Amazon, Netflix. They want to recommend you things that you, you might like. Um, yeah, and some, so some people are sometimes confused. So machine learning also is very related to computational statistics. And um, uh, so there's lots of exchange. And for me, it's really the same thing. But you could maybe say machine learning wants to automate things, where statistics are more about understanding a certain process. And you know, all these buzzwords that you know, are around, like big data, deep learning is a nice one currently. You can, they're all kind of related. And uh, obviously, you can use all this stuff to build robots. OK, so here's a bit about Shugun. Uh, this is our latest version. We are an open source project. 
Uh, we're made public since 2004, so this means we're public for 10 years now, it's quite old. We're currently eight core developers that kind of spend you know, time every day developing, and we got about 20 regular contributors. So we, we're quite a big project actually, um, given that we're just you know, coming from the community. The original background is from academia, so people at university have been developing this, and I work at university, so uh, it's still academia, but we are getting more and more into more applied uh, regions. And uh, what really boosted the project is four years ago we started doing the Google Sum of Code and so far we've been doing 29 projects. That's 29 times three month full-time work. So um, we get quite some impact with this. And um, so I'd say this now and a couple of more times we'll do a workshop actually this weekend, Sunday, Monday, which is free. So feel free to drop in. I'll, send, I'll give you some details. So here's a bit more about the size of the project. I, uh, who's familiar with Olo, the website Olo? Yeah, a few, okay. Last time I gave this talk at university, nobody know the website. So it's a, it's kind of a, they, they crawl GitHub to, to get statistics. So we got, you know, quite a few commits, we got quite a few contributors. I really like these comments here that they generate, so we have a very low number of source code comments, uh, it's mostly written in C++. We have a well-established mature code base of whatever this means, and 162 years of efforts. So it's quite nice, and uh, yeah, we got quite a few commits. So here's the here's the number of codes. So we, you know, I could I could talk about exponential growth here and stuff, but I, I won't. Uh, we're about to hit the million lines of code, which is nice. Here's the number of commits per month. So you know, you see the summer kind of boost things, and but even in winter, we still have you know on average about two three commits per day. So it's quite an active project, just to like set you up what we're talking about. Okay, machine learning. So uh, oh, you can't really see this well. Well. Okay, so uh, the most classic textbook machine learning is, you know, can be categorized into, you know, supervised learning, uh, unsupervised learning, and some other categories. So um, all these textbook algorithms, uh, we have them implemented. So this one is supervised learning, and yeah, okay, so I gotta hurry. So this is learning from uh, data that somebody labels for you. Somebody gives you some information that he knows about the data, and then you're trying to come up with uh, this uh, characterization of the data for some data that you haven't seen yet. So you take your, you know, you take your, your all your scans of your DNA that you had so far, and that you know whether the treatment was effective, the HIV treatment, and then you try to predict this for a new patient. So. In, if you open a textbook, all these methods, you'll, you'll pop across them. So, you know, support vector machines, there was a buzzword a couple of years ago, Gaussian processes. Uh, logistic regression is something that, you know, big companies currently are very interested in because you can parallelize it. All these things are implemented within Shogun. Um, and, um, <clears throat> yeah, I think I'll leave this for now. So, the other, the other class of algorithms that uh, we have quite a bit on is unsupervised learning. And there, it's a bit different. Um, you're just getting a bunch of data with no information to it and you, you're trying to come up with a characterization of the process that generated the data, uh, which we usually write like this. And again, if you open a textbook, there are all kinds of algorithms, like you know, clustering algorithms for k-means, so you have a bunch of points and you want to find, say you assume there are three clusters, what are the clusters, where are they, how can I, you know, how can I characterize them, can I use them for labeling things? And we get quite a few latent models, if you know what that means, um, which is basically trying to find a lower dimensional representation of uh, your, your information uh, in order to describe it in a more efficient way for communication or uh, to understand it. Um, and since I'm a bit in a rush, I'll go on. So these are all textbook methods, but we also got you know, quite a few researchers implementing their work for, for a toolbox. So that's, for example, what I do. So the stuff is actually not available somewhere else. Um, so all these, you know, all these things were kind of hot topics in... Uh, in machine learning recently, or still are, like here, this guy, and um, they're all in there. To get a feeling for what's in there, have a look at our collection of IPython notebooks on our website. They're quite nice. They're kind of tutorials about the methods and what you can do with them. Uh, skip this one here. When you do machine learning in practice, you have all sorts of problems, like you want to import your data, you want to pre-process it, and all these things, you can do this with the toolbox. So you can, you can have different types of different representations of data, like you know, uh, dense matrices, sparse data, strings, collections of documents, data streams. That's quite nice. And that's kind of a unique feature of our toolbox that we can just handle all these strings under a unified framework. There are different data types, there are pre-processing tools, there are methods to evaluate your algorithms, to tune the parameters and all this. So it kind of or comes all included to make your life uh, easier. Okay. Uh, that's already what I'm going to say about machine learning. Um, so here now are some technical features that might be interesting for you guys. 
So we've written in C++, uh, so you might ask, why are you on a Python conference? Well, we provide, um, we provide automatic interfaces to a bunch of languages. I'm going to talk about this in a minute. Um, so, but the reason why we're written in C++ is because we can then actually expose our framework to a lot of languages. And since we are, you know, doing quite low level things, it's, you know, we can do, we can do efficient code, we can handle the memory manually and do these kind of things. Um, we use quite a few, you know, cutting edge things for linear algebra and numerical computation like Eigen and recently we started using Vienna CL and these kind of things to do computation on GPUs. Um, if you, if you want to kind of get a grasp for, for the interface, have a look at our class list, the oxygen generated class list. Okay, and now here's the, one of the nicest things. So we don't believe that it's good to tell users what programming language to use. But obviously we want to, since we love all of Python, we use it a lot, like I use it a lot for my research, we want to have an interface to this. So we use SWIC. Does anyone not know what SWIC is? No? Okay, that's a, that's a magic tool. And what we do is we write our C++ classes. We define a bunch of type maps that converts you know, C types to say Python types. And then we have a list of classes that we want to expose. Then we press a button and at compile time, the Swift thing generates uh, interfaces to all these languages. So like whenever I implement a new algorithm and then I press a button, then I can use it from Python. And I'm gonna show you an example uh, in a minute. But this is quite this is quite neat because we have interfaces to you know Python, Octave, MATLAB, Java, R, Ruby, Lua, C Sharp, and it's all the same interface really, uh, with certain syntactic changes. So in C, this looks like this. You know, if you know C code, you you know you have your pointer and your type and your template, and you find a new instance of a class and some other bunch of new instances, and then you call methods on these classes. Five minutes, thanks. Um, so now we go to Python, and this, I do the same thing here, but rather than plugging in a, a 2D matrix, right, a pointer to a matrix, I now plug in a NumPy array. But it's really the same interface here. I define a bunch of instances and a bunch of classes, and I call methods on these classes. And then if I do a prediction here, train a support vector machine, I can get these here. In Python, you know, the first index is one, but if I go to octave, then the first, sorry, it's zero, but if I go to octave, you know, things don't really change and the first index is one, but it's the same code that's running under the hood. So it's quite neat, I think. So I also got Java, which is a bit more messy. Um, okay, then finally, um, another thing that we love Python for is IPython notebooks. So I said we use this mainly, we use this thing for our documentation quite a bit. And what another thing we've set up is we've set up a web service where you can try Shugum without installing it. So we're running an IPython notebook server in the cloud. You can connect it with your, with your GitHub account and then you can, you can run our example notebooks. I have to admit it's currently broken. We broke it this week, uh, which is bad, but uh, we'll fix it soon. And we also got a bunch of interactive web demos like OCR recognition written in Django. Uh, it's also quite nice under this link here. Okay, I'm not gonna talk about this. Uh, we do Thor testing, we use BuildBot, so we got quite a few builds. That's, that's also uh, quite like this. We got Fedora, FreeBSD, uh, Windows, Mac. They're offline in the screenshot, but they actually do work. And last two minutes, I'm gonna talk a bit about our community. So um, this is really the nicest thing about the project, for me at least, meeting all these people. So we got quite a few, act quite, a, quite an active mailing list and a, you know, an active IRC channel. So it turns out here, this guy who's, who's the, 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 um, the, con the, the, the guy who introduced me, uh, Daniel, he actually got back to us and I see we already knew each other. Uh, so that's nice. We got, you know, all sorts of people like this guy from Spain here. He's quite active. Um, there's few people, you know, sitting in the nowhere in Russia and just writing awesome code. And uh, <laughs> I, met, I met a few of them last year. It's kind of hard to talk to them because they don't speak English properly. But uh, yeah, it's nice. It's this guy here, Lambda Y, is living in Mumbai. Uh, he works 26 hours a day and um, writes really good stuff. So it's nice. It's nice talking to all these people. Have a, have a look on our GitHub page or on our contact page. Uh, then some of code is, uh, as I mentioned before, this really boosts it. I assume everyone here knows about this. So we got, we got, currently we got eight projects running. Um, I'm mentoring three, so I don't really sleep these days, uh, but it's quite cool. So um, if you're interested in machine learning, either mentoring a project or joining as a student, get back to us. Uh, so a few future ideas, we, we just founded a nonprofit association uh, to take, we, we want to be able to take donations, many open source projects do this these days, we're currently transferring our license from GPL to BSD, if people know what that means. 
Uh, we're kind of aiming for using sugar in educational purposes, but also in industry. And we also organize workshops. So here's like, we have a YouTube footage of our last year's workshop. Uh, the next one is on Sunday and on Monday. We got a hands-on session on Sunday where you can learn how to use sugar from a practical perspective and like a bunch of talks, a bit more science stuff. It's in the sea base. And the hands-on session is at ResearchGate. Check our website. Uh, if you're interested, it's free and you can just come along and grab a beer or coffee with us. Um, so last slide. Um, as I said, this is quite intense stuff. So we always appreciate any kind of help. So you can just use the toolbox if you're interested in machine learning, give us feedback. You can fix bugs. We got hundreds of bugs on GitHub. If you are like a super good C++ software uh, engineer, you can help us with design problems that we have within the framework. You can write Python examples and notebooks. Um, uh, this, is, this is actually quite cool. This is super fun, writing these notebooks. You can you know, help, up, help us with the documentation. We, need, we have a website in Django. Uh, I don't know Django. I don't know how to use it, so we need people to help us. If you have like the super next generation machine learning algorithm, come and implement it. Just get back to us. And um, yeah, also come to our workshop. Thank you. <laughs> yes, please. So the question is, uh, what's the difference between Shogun and other toolkits like Scikit-Learn or Weka or Orange? Um, yes, yeah, so um, like taking Scikit-Learn, which is the most similar one, it's actually a quite similar project. The thing is, um, so if you want to use Shogun, you are not bound to Python. That's kind of a big, big difference to the project. And also since we're written in C++, we can do things with the memory that the Python people have more trouble doing. So we can you know, build like huge data structures in memory and um, be, treat them really efficiently. So we can have some really large scale examples, you know, with millions of examples that run on a single machine. Um, but Otherwise, it's, it's, you know, there's also quite a bit of overlap. So we take a lot of inspiration from the Scikit-Learn website, for example, which I think is brilliant and the whole kind of way they document things and stuff. And I, so I know a few of the guys and I quite like the project also. And uh, I think it's good to have like a, you know, bit of diversity in projects. More questions? Yes. Um, so the question is uh, whether we have used machine learning to improve Shogun. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, um, mm, <laughs> so, uh, so machine learning unfortunately can't write, uh, you know, memory bug-free code for us. But what it can do is, uh, we, you know, these these Olo plots are quite nice. So sometimes I do a bit of, you know, uh, data mining on on our on our, you know, the number of classes and how they evolve and these kind of things. But it's really more for visualization and for um, for marketing. <laughs> yes? Um, yes, yeah, so the question is what I mean with large scale. Um, so I got a few, I skipped this example here. So these ones, these ones here are quite neat. So this was done on a laptop. Uh, so there's an example from Bioinformatics. It's about splice site recognition. So splice site is something in your DNA where you, you know, where uh, your gene is, your, your DNA is transcribed to RNA and then it's cut into pieces to, before it's translated to protein and you want to kind of predict where this happens. Uh, and there's a data set here which we're talking about 50 million examples and the dimension of the feature space, the representation is 200 million. Uh, so that's quite big and uh, this runs on a laptop in a couple of hours. So, um, and this works by the magic of, you know, defining data streams and kind of streaming files from the network and then putting them in the algorithms. But uh, Shogun is meant to run on a single computer. So it's not a distributed toolbox. Okay, more questions? Okay, thanks guys.